Hey everyone, so I wanted to wade in on a subject about the next generation consoles that I think is really important. Now, I've alluded to it in the past, but when my article about Xbox Series X posted on Eurogamer, some interesting comments emerged that I really wanted to follow up on. So you see, it's all about the solid state storage solutions we're going to find in both PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox console or consoles. We've heard about loading times being an order of magnitude faster, which is great, of course, but there's more to it than that. Low level access to this generational leap in storage performance is about more than just loading times. I've said in the past in somewhat general terms that the move to SSD is going to bring mass storage closer to the system than it's ever been before. But what does that actually mean? Well, let's go back to my Eurogamer article or more specifically the reaction to it. None other than Xbox's Phil Spencer picked up on the piece and talked about the innovations required to deliver generational increases in performance when Moore's Law is slowing down. Meanwhile, Tom Warren, senior editor at The Verge, a journalist and indeed a publication I've got a lot of time for, waded in with this. He adds his weight to my sources and those of Windows Central who are saying that Xbox Series X delivers 12 teraflops of GPU power, but he goes on to talk about other features such as VRS, variable rate shading and hardware accelerated ray tracing. But what's this? Memory paging magic? Warren then talks about how developers can load in data structures that are larger than GPU memory, citing improvements in terrain mapping and open worlds. All very interesting stuff, potentially game changing in some respects. And there is actually weight to this, not just from Warren's tweets, but also from Microsoft itself. Flashback to E3 2019 and the Project Scarlet teaser. We have a simple comment here. So let's go back and check it out. We've created a new generation of SSDs. We're actually using the SSD as virtual RAM. We're seeing more than 40 times performance increases over the current generation. So the SSD being used as virtual RAM. Well, there we go. A simpler to understand description of what Tom Warren was talking about there. But you know, funnily enough, the entire discussion playing out online reminded me that I've actually seen technology similar to this in action already. In fact, I've already seen it at an AMD presentation I attended back in 2017. Myself and a bunch of editors were invited to Los Angeles by AMD to get the lowdown on Threadripper and Radeon RX Vega, behind the scenes briefings that tend to happen with every major CPU or GPU launch. Then after that, we sat down for the Capsaia Sun presentation that was live streamed to everyone, where essentially we saw pretty much the same information that we'd seen in the editor's day delivered again. But that presentation sticks in my mind for two reasons. First of all, there was this almost comedic reveal of a petaflop epic Radeon Instinct server. Looking back at it now, the presentation is even more ludicrous than it was at the time. But secondly, then AMD, now Intel guru Raja Kaduri revealed an RX Vega workstation card that didn't just ship with HBM2 memory, but also an onboard 2 terabyte SSD. Yes, an SSD connected directly to the GPU. Vega actually has a high bandwidth cache controller in both workstation and consumer cards that gives the GPU far faster access to a ton more memory that isn't necessarily physically connected to the PCB. The workstation card here utilizes that technology to make some seriously impressive stuff happen. This light field rendering demo uses extreme detail assets that bust beyond the limits of HBM2. And you can see on the right here what happens when you don't have enough memory available. Glitching and stuttering as the data is shunted in and out of video memory, while the entire data set fully accessible on SSD and plays back in real time in a super smooth manner. Pretty impressive, I'd say. A second demo was geared more towards video professionals where 8K video dumped straight from a high-end RED camera was played back on an editing timeline. 
interesting, but perhaps not hugely relevant to the point I'm trying to make. But the final demo was fascinating. With a 250 billion polygon data set processed and path traced in real time. According to Raja, the film studio that created it had never seen this data set loaded and rendered in real time on a single workstation. And then to prove the point still further, AMD attempted to load the same asset into an NVIDIA powered workstation, which eventually gave up with an out of memory error. So during development of this film, they didn't actually have access to this particular card. They needed to cut this huge asset up into smaller chunks. But 250 billion path trace polygons. So yeah, now that Radeon Pro SSG workstation card costs 7,000 of your US dollars, or at least it did back in the day. But as I understand it, it is effectively a Vega card with an NVMe slot for a standard PCI Express SSD. So there are definitely parallels then with what Microsoft is doing in terms of the hardware configuration for Series X. But just how much of this technology can migrate over to the new console? Okay, well, the basic principle I think is very, very similar. The Radeon Pro SSG works by increasing the addressable memory to cover both high bandwidth onboard memory and then the extra supplied by the NVMe drive, which I suspect is exactly what the new Xbox will do and very likely PlayStation 5 too. But we are talking about very different use cases here. The workstation setup is all about accessing raw, ginormous data sets that may well occupy a big proportion of its two terabyte drive. The Xbox implementation is likely to be very, very different. Specifically, the size of extra addressable memory will be a lot lower. I'd say that we're looking at one terabyte of overall drive space on Series X. And that one terabyte has to act as traditional storage, holding all of your games as well as acting as virtual memory. But you know, that's absolutely fine. Addressing raw 3D modeling with 250 billion polygons isn't gonna be needed for your games. Uh, the similar principle on a smaller scale can still achieve some impressive feats, I'd say. And it's gonna be needed to deliver a generational leap in available memory because GDDR6 is still so expensive and there's a very real possibility that Series X will only ship with 16 gigs of the stuff. Just four gigabytes more memory than Xbox One X. But regardless, maybe we've already had a preview of what this virtual memory can deliver. Okay, so Alex has already posted his thoughts on the Hellblade 2 teaser reveal. Some folks seem to have been a bit preoccupied on rendering resolutions and frame rates on what is, as Alex said, highly likely to be an in-engine offline render. But the real story here is in fidelity and scope. That's the message that Microsoft wanted to put across in that trailer, I reckon. Fidelity, of course, speaks for itself. But the scale and scope of what we're seeing here is frankly astonishing. And maybe, just maybe, this is a vision of how bringing vast data sets from solid state storage directly into the game may make a big difference to the experiences we're gonna be enjoying in the next generation. Now there's still a lot of ambiguity about what this Hellblade 2 trailer is actually attempting to deliver, but there is one incontrovertible takeaway. The sheer level of detail built into the authoring of the game assets here is genuine next level stuff. Now, whether that authoring will translate into actual in-game visuals, well, that's the big mystery really, isn't it? But having this immense virtual RAM available should be a key resource to developers. And at the very least, it should help in mitigating the fact that a generational leap in actual physical memory just isn't possible this time around. I think it's also worth pointing out that its actual utility will obviously be more limited than GDDR6. SSDs are lightning fast in storage terms, but very slow compared to, you know, traditional DRAM. SSDs though, well, for next gen, we already have some shaky cam footage uh, from Sony of how a boost in bandwidth allows a PS5 port of Marvel's Spider-Man to deliver an order of magnitude improvement in loading times. But we also have a secondary demo there, much faster traversal across the city with data transfer no longer being limited by the constraints of a mechanical drive. We're also beginning to hear more about the capabilities of next gen, specifically the ability to put to sleep multiple games, then reaccess them almost immediately without the need to reload. Now this sounds to me like system RAM is being dumped to SSD, somewhat akin to the process when your PC goes into hibernation mode. And I'm guessing that SSD 
will be centre stage in making that happen. So perhaps you can see now why this aspect of the console design is so, so important to Microsoft and indeed Sony, and why it is dominating a lot of their early messaging. Okay, so that was a bit longer than I expected, but I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed putting it together. But for now, please do like and subscribe to support the work we do at Digital Foundry. And yes, the bell, it's there for ringing and doing so means you'll get instant notifications whenever we post new video content. And that can only be a good thing, right? And if you love what we do, if you want to support myself, John, Tom and Alex more directly in putting content like this together, then yeah, please do consider the DF Patreon. Your help makes a huge difference in allowing us to pursue the projects we want to cover. And believe me, that goes a long way in making a really tough job that much more satisfying and indeed making Digital Foundry financially viable. And of course, you'll also get access to pristine quality video downloads of everything we do into the bargain. But that's all from me for now. From me, from the Digital Foundry team, thanks so much for your support and thanks for watching. Do you guys love that or what?